China's president has urged for what he calls a more just world order. Xi Jinping made the comments at the end of the BRICS summit that brought together Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So what sort of influence does BRICS have? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Jane Dutton. Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa may not seem to have much in common, but they've built a common ground through the international organization known by their acronym BRICS. The coalition held its summit in China this week to discuss terrorism, governance and trade. Five other countries, including Egypt and Kenya, also attended the meeting. So what's the future of this group that doesn't get much attention on the world stage. We'll put that to our guests in a moment. But first, Adrian Brown sets up our discussion from Beijing. BRICS was formed to give the five emerging economies a platform to discuss trade and development. Most of the members came together in 2006, with South Africa joining four years later. The BRICS countries account for more than 40% of the world's population and have contributed more than half of the global economic growth over the past decade. That's according to the IMF. BRICS leaders say they've cooperated in over 30 areas, including agriculture, security, science and tourism. But it's difficult to pinpoint definitive signs of the collective's success. So what can we expect from BRICS going forward? Well, let's introduce our guests in New Delhi. Sriram Chulia, Professor and Dean at the Jindal School of International Affairs in Beijing. Ena Tanjan, who advises the Chinese government on economic development issues. And in Nairobi, Ali Khan Sachu, CEO of Rich Management and an emerging markets economist. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Sriram Chala. China marks us as one golden decade. And when you look at what's happening at the moment, it doesn't feel that way, does it, from an economic point of view or a political point of view. So what do you think he was referring to there? I think uh, the Chinese want to celebrate uh, the completion of uh, one uh, phase of uh, BRICS development. Uh, it's been built brick by brick, literally. BRICS. Uh, and uh, if you go back over the last uh, decade, uh, there were many uh, naysayers and um, skeptics uh, and doubters who have been proved wrong by the fact that we have stuck together despite the dif differences in our uh, alignments, in our foreign policies, in our domestic econo economic systems. We have stuck together. We have uh, found traction in the idea. We have built a lot of uh, institutions, mechanisms for cooperation. Uh, you mentioned 40 areas, there are probably many more. Uh, now we have expanded beyond economics and have also gone to security level dialogue. And uh, yeah, there are uh, issues of uh, you know ch perceived Chinese hegemony and domination, but I would still say that BRICS has uh, is a different type of um, uh, inter intergovernmental institution and uh, also spreading to societies where we are placing the principle of equity and equality foremost. So uh, if you look at the share capitals of the uh, New Development Bank, it's equally divided. If you look at the governance structures within BRICS that have evolved, it's based on egalitarian principles. So even if uh, China uh, is preponderant in terms of material capabilities, in status and dignity, all the member countries have come together. And on the question of the India-China you know, dispute somehow uh, disrupting the um, progress of BRICS, we have actually come around in a way. There's a reset underway. And compared to the bad blood of just uh, a week ago, China and India have had a very fruitful bilateral on the sidelines of BRICS. So I think overall, I would say from 11 to 23 percent of uh, world output, we have gone in 10 years, BRICS collectively. Uh, we have gone from 10 percent of world trade to 16 percent. Uh, we have uh, now account for about 12 percent of total investment. Intra-BRICS trade is growing. Development cooperation from you know water and sanitation to solar energy. We are doing a whole gamut of things and showing that there is a path ahead for South-South cooperation. We are leading emerging 
economies, instead of uh, being mired in continuous geopolitical strife and conflict, can also actually put together something which is a, you know, uh, not just okay, an hold alternative on, let me just to the bread and system and the Western system, many, but also upkeeping. Many points uh, were open, made open there, but Sridharam, is it all about China and the One Belt, One Road project? Where does that leave countries like BRICS? India, for example, I know I'm not too happy about that. Uh, yes, uh, but you know, I would still uh, go back to the point that you know there is a kind of um, momentum for collective decision making and for multilateralism. This is not, I mean, there's no reason for the other four member countries to tag along. Really, I mean, they have their own choices, and we are and not being forced to join BRICS by China. But isn't weighted in favour of China here it, at India's peril and the other countries' peril? I don't think so. You know, uh, if you look at the way the decision making has happened, it's pretty democratic. Uh, and the Chinese have come to realize that that is why they invest more in their unilateral projects like One Belt, One Road, which is outside this multilateral consensus based framework, because they cannot completely have their say. And therefore, if you look at, um, you know, even the declaration that's come out of Xiamen in the summit uh, that's just concluded, um, the biggest achievement for India and is to actually persuade China to name Pakistan-based uh, extremist uh, jihadist organizations as uh, subjects of concern that must be uh, acted upon. So if China were just, uh, you know, ruling the roost here, they would not have even consented to this. So I think there's a lot of, you know, we, one has to actually get into the diplomatic process, the way it is functioning. You know, we want to set an example uh, for a just and equitable world order and we are doing it through our own personal interactions among these there was a border standoff that uh, you mentioned earlier and which had caused uh, heartburn on both sides but it's been resolved amicably so that shows that there is a degree of maturity we do have rivalries but we are managing them and i think that itself is a major success and no other grouping of this nature which brings emerging powers from different uh, continents can actually get along so well so i think we have set an example for the world we would hope that this becomes the basis for other emerging economies, less developed countries, to also form groupings that are not just regional, like African Union or Mercosur or ASEAN, but to also think about inter-regional connections, bringing the whole uh, global south together. So there's a lot of idealism behind this, and uh, I think we've invested a lot. Our okay, this hopes, idealism, our aspirations, uh, our dreams, our China's our calling for a so more... Just so we just got one more question here, Sriram. I mean, looking towards the next 10 years, are we going to see greater military cooperation, cooperation between these players? considering, you know, what we've been talking about as far as North Korea is concerned. Where is the bloc headed now? Hopefully, we will see more progress on um, collective security mechanisms that we are evolving. I think even on a question like North Korea, BRICS is unanimous and that we don't want war. We want a peaceful and negotiated settlement. We don't want any kind of uh, preemptive or preventive attacks that can spiral out of control and lead to catastrophe. I think uh, we are going to empower each other in our respective regions to take the lead and the rest of the members are going to fall behind and support those initiatives for peace and for uh, conflict resolution. I think counter-terrorism, we are moving uh, very, very far and I think that is really the most hopeful arena because uh, Russia, China and India especially are all threatened by jihadist extremism and we all have found common ground at BRICS. And BRICS is also eventually going to somewhat massage the bilateral tensions because prestige is at stake. You know, we can't be seen to be squabbling and fighting uh, all the time and putting the um, the interests of the other players, uh, taking them to hostage. This is a multilateral process. We have all acting uh, acted with greater maturity and showing the world that it is possible to think of a, uh, a different order in which uh, not only are we moving uh, from west to east or from north to south, okay, but also let's one leave it based there, please, on different principles Julia, that are less run out of time. And less Thank you very much to all three of my guests, Sriram, Ena Tangan and Alikan Sachin. Thank you too for watching.